coming. Um, I just want to start off by saying, although I do live in Oregon, uh, I was born in the East Bay here in Hayward, so <laughs> I figure California is part of my territory. So um, I'm gonna today I'm gonna talk about uh, one particular lichen that uh, has some conservation um, designation in the northwest part of the state. This is Wilberia oregana, and um, the Loberia oregana is a Pacific Northwest endemic species of lichen that is distributed from in the south, uh, right in the very northwestern corner of California, all the way up along the Pacific Rim, um, through the Pacific Northwest in Canada up to south central Alaska. And uh, the, one of the reasons why this is an interesting species is that it's really considered a keystone like in, in, in terms of the, this Pacific Northwest for, uh, rainforest ecosystem. Um, and as s several people have mentioned already, um, it's, this is a nitrogen fixing species which uh, is, has an importance for the ecosystem. Um, this is one of the more widely studied species uh, because of this uh, and it has, um, it's been shown to be one of the major contributors for uh, novel nitrogen coming into the ecosystem in these old growth forests. The cyanobacteria that is found inside the lichen will actually fix atmospheric nitrogen and incorporate it into its thallus and then when the, those lichens fall to the ground, that nitrogen gets released and is available to the ecosystem. Um, also because this is an easily identifiable species that is, uh, we, it's, it's considered one of the charismatic macro lichens for this flora and um, a real indicator of this rainforest type habitat. <clears throat> so as you can see in California, it's, it's really restricted to this very narrow strip in the very northwestern part of the state. Um, and we were interested in knowing uh, a little bit more about the distribution of it within the forest canopy. And also, we were also interested in knowing if the current methods for detecting it uh, are sufficient in order to be able to identify new populations. So um, thanks to the work of Tom Carlberg and, and other people down through the, through the last several years, there's been about 55 locations of this that have been located um, in the Six Rivers National Forest, all of which occur in the Smith River watershed. Um, and this is listed as a <coughs> survey and manage species. Um, which is a designation in, under the Northwest Forest Plan for species that occur within the range of the Northern Spotted Owl. And uh, so this has a conservation designation uh, separate than the CNPS ones that, or the CNDDB ones that we've talked about already. <coughs> um, so this is a Forest Service designation. And um, so out of the 55 locations where it's known, we visited uh, 10 sites and we had the, the, our study questions were, uh, again, what is the distribution and abundance of this species within the forest canopy um, here in California? Also, uh, are the current ground-based survey methods sufficient to detect this? Or, um, you know, is there other things that have to be done in order to, to find new sites of this? And then are there any uh, civil cultural recommendations that, that we could present? Um, based on our findings. So we, what we did is we went to these known sites of, of Loberia oregana and we climbed uh, <coughs> trees and um, we climbed into <coughs> over 100 trees and, and mapped its distribution within the canopy. We, we visually divided up the forest canopy into these various different um, strata and what we would do is we'd climb to, uh, let's see, here's a, we would climb to the middle of, of one of these, these strata, we'd park ourselves right here, and then we would visually assess the, the forest canopy and uh, divide it up into the inner, middle, and outer parts of the branches and then the bowl of the tree. And then we would assign a um, percent cover value for Loberia oregana um, on all of the available substrates, so we give it a percent cover value. Uh, and, and in that way, we mapped the distribution within the forest canopies. 
We also conducted randomized ground plots where we went in, uh, the ground crew would go in and, and basically randomly select a, a patch of forest floor and intensely look at this small patch to see if they can detect uh, Wolverine organ in the litter fall. And then, um, as well as, as doing that randomized uh, process, we also went to every tree where we climbed and we, we searched within the drip zone of that tree to see if we could find occurrences in the litter fall. Um, so sort of comparing a targeted search, a, a more random search, and then com um, comparing it with what we found in the first So, um, <clears throat> so that was the, the basic idea of the study. And so then we basically plotted out uh, all of these occurrences on in, in this type of way in order to visualize the, the distribution within the canopy. <clears throat> and so that's what is presented here. Um, for, this, for this graph, you can see uh, we have the height of the, tree, of the tree here on this axis, and then, the, and then um, centered around <coughs> these, these lines here, the, the occurrences on the bowl, the inner branches, the middle branches, and the outer branches. And then the size of the circle, each circle represents one uh, occurrence, and then the size of the circle, um, the bigger the, the circle, the higher the percent cover. Now, the, the percent cover values are based on all of the available substrate within each individual strata, and so, um, and so as you can see, there's, there's quite a variety of, of sizes and distributions within the canopy. Uh, Basically, Laveria organa in the Six Rivers National Forest occurs everywhere from the upper canopy all the way down into the, down to the ground level. But there's some very interesting patterns that emerge based on this. Um, the first most obvious thing that you see here is that there's a, a high concentration on the, on the bowls of the trees at a at down low. And um, in this situation, the a higher percentage of the available substrate is colonized by the very organ and get some of the biggest, um, most robust population or occurrences in that in that segment. But then as you climb up the tree, uh, it quickly drops off and becomes only a trace element to the to the <coughs> lichen flora um, in that area. Uh, and then as you move out from the bowl uh, into the into these other strata, you'll see that in the in the inner and, and middle parts of the canopy, um, you get uh, much thicker growths of, of Liberia organa, and, um, and also uh, another pattern that's somewhat apparent here, especially on, on this inner one, is that, again, as you go up the tree, um, it becomes thinner and thinner and smaller occurrences of this. Also, by the time you get out to the outer branches, you have the same thing occurring uh, where um, you have smaller occurrences of, of Liberia organa and a smaller percent cover of the available substrate is colonized. Again, at the top of the, of the tree is also the same pattern. Um, it does occur up there, but only in, in uh, relatively lower abundances. Now taking the same data and, and plotting it a different way, on, on this graph, um, you can see uh, this is uh, the, at diameter at breast height, we, we used, uh, we looked at that as kind of a proxy for tree size or tree age. Um, and in this case, you can see another very distinct pattern with happening with um, down in the, in the, on the lower bowls. And what's interesting about this is that not only is, is the Loberia concentrated on the lower bowls, but also on the smaller diameter trees. Um, this is something that was we thought we found to be very interesting because oftentimes with these old growth associated trees, it's thought that the lichens uh, take a long time to establish and they grow very slow and so they're gonna be concentrated on the bigger trees. But what we found is that there's probably a, um, a distributional dynamic going on with, it, with this lichen's ability to move around the forest. Um, and because this lichen reproduces through uh, very heavy propagules out on the edge of the thallus, uh, these, these propagules, which are even larger than an Isidia or a Ceridia, 
Um, they are, they are, uh, lobules are, um, they're coming down into the force, into the lower canopy reaches, and they're establishing themselves, but only on the lower branches. <coughs> they're on the lower bulb. So as you, as you get bigger trees, uh, this pattern dies off. So it's, it's really only on the smaller trees that you get large occurrences of, of uh, this lichen. Um, <coughs> in the inner and, and middle areas of the strata of the canopy, uh, branches, uh, again, that, that's the area that has the, probably the, the most robust overall populations. And again, uh, same thing, doesn't matter what the diameter is, basically the outer branches have, have a, a less occurrence of Loveria organa. Now, another interesting pattern here is that, again, the, the smaller diameter trees, it's occurring on the bowl, but then also as you go up, there's also some large occurrences um, on the smaller diameter trees, but then <coughs> there's also some some very old, very big trees which have large occurrences also. And so um, our conclusions are that basically the uh, it's uh, it's surviving on the bigger, larger trees, and then it's it's um, falling down from the canopy and and then establishing on the lower boles of the smaller diameter trees. <coughs> So when we looked at the uh, abundance in the canopy versus our ability to detect it at the base of the trees, uh, what we have here is in areas where the, uh, you have low canopy occurrence, medium, and then high, uh, and then on the left of, within each of those is whether we were able to find it at the base of the tree or not. And um, as you can see in where, where it occurs as a, as a very trace occurrence, less than 3% of the available substrate within the canopy, uh, it had, uh, we, we had a harder time detecting it. Most of the trees didn't have it at the base. Um, when you get into more of a medium distribution between 3 and 10% of the available substrate, uh, we, we start to be able to detect it better, um, as indicated here. And then the, the trees that have really a high abundance, so uh, greater than 10% of the available substrate, it, it, almost all of them had an occurrence in the litter fall at the base of the tree. <clears throat> the ground plots, on the other hand, uh, didn't show a significant, uh, statistically significant ability to detect or predict um, the, uh, the occurrence of Loveria oregana. And all of the sites that we visited were known sites, uh, but um, still you can see with the, the R squared values and the T values, uh, displayed here that this wasn't a very strong indicator. So basically going into the forest and randomly looking on the ground is not gonna, is not gonna um, reliably detect this, this species. <coughs> um, so the, our, conclusions, uh, uh, would it, uh, our conclusions about what is the distribution and abundance of blueberry organa within the canopy, um, again, it, it, as, you can, as you can see from the Grass I presented, it can be anywhere in the canopy, uh, but it's most concentrated in that inner and middle strata of, of the forest canopy. But then there's this distinct concentration on the lower bowl of, the, of some of the smaller diameter understory trees, both conifers and, and hardwoods in this, in this case. And it avoids the upper and outer reaches of the canopy. Um, and our current ground-based survey methods sufficient. Um, our conclusion was that it, with targeted searches, uh, especially if, if surveyors were to use binoculars in order to get a look up into the canopy, that yes, the targeted uh, ground-based searches are sufficient enough to be able to detect this. You don't have to climb in all these stands in order to, to find it. We only found, um, we were able to find it in all of the stands on the ground uh, in all but the lowest concentration um, and then in terms of civil cultural recommendations, uh, there were, there was, um, several of the sites where we visited that brushing had occurred, uh, to, to clear out the understory, and we consider that to be, to not have an effect on the populations. Uh, we would recommend, um, pre-project surveys on the ball, on the bowls of these small diameter trees, especially, uh, using binoculars in order to be able to find it. And 
uh, after those pre or pre-project surveys, then uh, 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 some conservative thinning of the unoccupied small trees in order to uh, to promote old growth characteristics is probably compatible with <coughs> the long-term population viability. Um, and then we would recommend not removing any of the medium or large trees, which tend to have the, the highest populations um, or the most uh, widely distributed and the most occurrences on those trees. <coughs> um, yeah, so with that, uh, I'll find the question.